Hello, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Chronicle, Vancouver by Night, New Blood. As a warning, this is a mature game, and it explores some dark and troubling themes. These may include body horror, gore, violence, loss of character agency, gaslighting, mind control, and many others. Our players have discussed consent and boundaries, and we collectively avoid situations that may be triggering. If the players will always let me know if anything gets uncomfortable by using a yellow and red card system in our private chat. If you as a viewer ever feel uncomfortable or triggered, please pause and step away. Our streams are always going to be available on YouTube after the game, so you can come back to an episode if you feel ready, or you can skip ahead to the next one. Uh, so, I'd like to thank our sponsors now, starting with Mikhail Artoria of Artoria Designs, who creates these beautiful dice boxes, and you can hear some dice ASMR going on in there. Uh, please visit him on Instagram, and the links will be in the chat. You can have, like, various clan symbols on there. They're actually amazing. Um, and Lumen Agents is a comedy web series that weaves real conspiracy theories into its sci-fi short-form episodes. It's shot in Toronto, and this indie production will leave you laughing and questioning reality at the same time. You can watch season one with this guy. Uh, it includes also a musical finale episode for free on Sika.tv. And Orc.Style is an adults-only fantasy fetish fashion brand for all of you orc-loving monster huggers out there. Orc style shirts, underwear, and accessories are sure to drop your intelligence and increase your confidence by 10 points. They also have released their Chopper's Orc Tusks, and Chopper's are perfect for cosplay, roleplay, and streaming. Orc style's expert tusk enchanters infuse the spirits of great orcs, trolls, ogres, and goblins into magical tusks that transform the common human into a fierce monster. Smartlet Games is a collective of TTRPG veterans ready to work for you. From tabletop RPG development to actual play production, they have contributed to various Storyteller Vault titles and sponsored channels like us to keep the World of Darkness a haven for those with stories to, to tell. You can visit their link in the chat, which should be over there, and to explore their world, and they can help you create yours. And Adventure Dice. Adventure Dice is your Canadian source for dice, role-playing game accessories, and other tabletop gaming goodies. Many of the items on their site are handcrafted in beautiful British Columbia, Canada, where at least a few of these folks on screen are from. Uh, and Dogmite Games. Dogmite Games is the best gaming company you've never heard of. They combine craftsmanship with artistry to create truly unique pieces of functional art for your game. From dice bosses and rolling trays to fully sculpted Valhalla screens for GMs. Each piece is created on site in the workshop in Michigan by a devoted team of craftsmen. And as you can see, we've got the clan symbol dice rolling trays for everybody. I have the one that is apparently the most important in the end times, which is the one for the Thin Bloods. Cool. Probably best if you don't ask if you don't already know. Elaine's face. <laughs> Trying to do the Nosferatu clan symbol. Like, yeah, there we go. Perfect. I've been, been practicing. I've been practicing. <laughs> uh, and Demiplane RPG. Demiplane is amazing. Uh, let me tell you just how amazing Demiplane is. This, um, it's got everything at your fingertips online. You can look up different discipline powers you can look up different rules you can look up like say for example um how willpower rolls work i'm not looking at anyone specifically it was me because you know i apparently don't know some of the rules sometimes but i go to demiplane and it has everything you just do a search you can find everything there it's absolutely amazing um check them out on Demiplane RPG. You can get all of the vampire rules in one place at one time for one low, low price. So now it's time to introduce some of our vampires. Uh, let's start over in this direction, up in the upper left hand corner, with uh, Violetta. Drasoichet. 
I am Cosmic Dazai, otherwise known as Violetta Tremblay. I am playing the manipulative, the meat scene. <laughs> uh, yes, we have to plug it. We have to plug it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lawyer in this chronicle. Uh, and Sophia. Hello, darlings. Monica here, playing your uh, lavish uh, Toreador extraordinaire here, uh, trying to get ready for this amazing ball that's going to be happening soon. So exciting stuff. Um, and before we jump over to uh, Antonia, who is right above me, I just want to point out that there may be a mild disruption because there are two kittens which are running ram consciously all over the place over to my right so antonia gotta love some kittens <laughs> uh hello my name is joanna i will be playing antonia Fyotrovska for you this evening morning or afternoon wherever you may be uh she is your friendly neighborhood venture club owner and uh she's ready to have some fun this evening and over here is key Was muted. Hello, I am Key, aka Chris, aka DD Imposter on all socials. I am playing the lovely moral compass of this group who brings clarity when Violetta gets confused sometimes. Uh, and the old man, last but certainly not least. Uh, hello, my name is Alan, and I am playing the old man. Uh, the Poteries, uh, resident, Nosferatu cleaner, fixer, quilted quicker, picker upper. It's handy when there's a lot of blood around that maybe I caused. So it's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. We're fine. And now I'm going to be forced to have Ceases after me because I'm probably going to Google, okay, so which brand of paper towel is best for cleaning up blood? Just sort of like, yeah. You know, and then Ceases goes, aha! <laughs> uh, so, when last we saw the vampires that you see on screen, they were... I think the term that I'll probably use for this is entertaining offers. Because they were granted a domain. A domain in... Vampire is something granted by the prince. It gives either a coterie of vampires or a specific individual vampire. It gives them a kind of sub princedom in the city that they happen to be in. And these particular vampires, this coterie, was granted domain of the area that surrounds their club, which is in the financial district, and it is kind of a nine-block area. So they were granted this area, and then since then, a lot of the kindred in the city of Vancouver have been, let's say, interested in making friends all of a sudden, almost as if there's moving and shaking going on, like the Coterie, who seemed before to kind of want to not even necessarily stay out of politics, but just keep a low profile with regards to it, is now kind of thrust into the spotlight. So, they've also been investigating someone who has been trying to kind of muscle in on their turf. They found someone who was handing out little, little packets of individually wrapped illicit substances, and they tracked them down to a person who may or may not have had some information. They went into where they were being held in the police uh, kind of j the kind of the local jail, not really the the prison or anything, just sort of the this is where you hold people who haven't quite been put out on bail yet. 
and they questioned that particular person to find out as much information as they could about it. And on top of all of that, Sophia is being tasked with throwing a party because the Toreador are now kind of heightening a spotlight that is already upon the Coterie. They're heightening a spotlight onto Sophia herself because there are several what are called guilds, which are individual groups of Toreador within a city that kind of a subset within the Camarilla itself, politic amongst each other and snipe at each other and try to jostle for position and status. Several of those are now wanting to bring Sophia into their fold and make sure that Sophia is part of their group because she's becoming, with the Coterie itself, more sought after in the importance of the kindred of the city. So, this being a new night, and I have rambled on for far too long, I'm going to have everyone do a rouse check to see where we're at for the blood levels. Um, let's have it so that everybody is defaulted back down to one uh, hunger. Unless some of you wanted to go out and kill mortals, that's no, fine. No, 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 it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> that's a Sunday thing, silly. I'll do it. Sundays <laughs> for picking stones. Oh, my lanta. I'm hungry, I'll do it. I'll go fight. I'll do it. Uh, old man, how was your rouse check? Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, I must make the roll now. Um, is it just uh, uh well, sorry, the just roll a, is yeah, just a single hundred days. Got it. I rolled a four. You are hungrier <laughs> by one, by one, yeah. So that puts you at two. Um, mm -hmm. so the old man, pun waking. That just was grammatically absolutely incorrect. The old man, upon <laughs> awakening, there we go. That sounds a little better. Uh, it's not so much for vampires. The the blood in their system doesn't really go into their stomachs. Your your internal organs are all essentially from non use for as long as you've been kindred. They're atrophied. They're the blood kind of goes directly into your limbs. You are essentially a, a blood sack that is supernaturally animated. Yeah. And it's it's a pain. It's kind of a draw. It's a like a it's not really a hunger pain because you would feel that in your stomach, but you feel it kind of across your entire body that you are hungrier. And you hear in the back of your mind like a <clears throat> oh man, you should eat something. I know. Do you though? Cut up. I don't think that's gonna happen. You see, I'm I'm probably gonna get more annoying the hungrier you get. Shut up. And that's pretty much the last you hear, because you're only at two hunger. If you were at four hunger, I'd be, you know, going on for like half an hour. Uh, <laughs> Key, <laughs> Key, how did your uh, rouse check go? So that's a great question. So which dice do I use? Is it just the one? <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be. We just haven't just done be this the, yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just be one hunger dice for the roll. Fuck, I got four. Okay. Two. He is also hungrier. How did we Damn determine it. what Key's uh, beast sounds like? What, what did we say? Um, freak, what was his name? Uh, we it, He's that same voice that Zekko Khan from... <laughs> that's what I envision him as. Zekko Khan from uh, the Road El Dorado. <laughs> no idea what that <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you hear in the back of your mind... As 
he kind of goes through the same motions that the old man just did. Kind of that entire body, like, kind of yearning for something. You should eat. Eat. But there's no one fun around. Then go find someone. If you say please. Please. Pretty please. With sugar on top. Don't fucking eat. He is just like smiling to themselves now. <laughs> Nice little, like, morning affirmation. <laughs> uh, Antonia, how is... How was your rouse, Jack? I rolled a seven. Antonia is not hungrier. Okay. Um, Sophia, how are we doing? I rolled a ten. Sophia is also not hungrier. All right. Uh, Violetta, how are we doing? I rolled a success, which please nice. zoom. I rolled a success. <laughs> hey, I got those dice. <laughs> All right. So, um, is everyone meeting at the Dark Star? I think so. Yes. Yes, All but right. I'm yelling at my assistant for. Oh wait, sorry, ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, intern. <laughs> uh, uh, I will do that also, but on the way, I will give um, my ghoul a call. Uh, I call him a ghoul because he knows what he is. Uh, and um, uh, and I say, um, have uh, have someone in the tunnels by uh, by the end of the n -n 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 night. I'm getting hungry. And I just hang up. <laughs> so then uh, the old man does not hear on the other side of the phone. Like, do you want that now? Hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, all right. So that will be probably placed before the end of the evening. Um, so for the Dark Star itself, Antonia... How does the club look? Let's refresh everyone's memories for everyone who is observing at home. Um, so the Dark Star is a basement club, but it's a two-level club. Uh, so you come in, um, you've got basically your coat check, your your uh, cover charges and stuff like that, because, you know, good goths pay cover. Um, <laughs> you go down the stairs and um, there is a large expanse that you wouldn't really expect under you know under the financial district but here we are um there are comfy couches there's lots of seating uh, velvet curtains there's a stage at the front for various acts bands or djs um and the main level that you came in on there's a separate staircase that goes up to the uh vip area it's basically like a balcony that encircles the club except for the stage area so it's you know kind of a standard look for a theater um and so that is where the v vip and the vip area are um and that is probably where they would be meeting um I'm also kind of assuming that behind the VVIP, there's probably a kind of coterie only VVIP area, which is... A, well, yes. Yes. I mean, we also have rooms and stuff like that, like our staff rooms and, and the various like Antonia's office and stuff like that where they can meet. But yeah, there's, there's you know, a comfy booth there where everybody can sit down from the coterie that's permanently reserved and pretty much everybody knows it. And if they don't, the security will tell them. So let's fast forward everybody to um, basically like you're all arriving at the Dark Star. You're all there. There's uh, it's probably a Sunday night, I would guess. I think the last particular session was Saturday. Um. Are there any, like, specific nights going on on Sundays? Is there, like, a... 
night for the people who are going to go to work tomorrow morning who are, you know, who can handle that kind of thing because I can't because that's me. I would say that this Sunday, the Sunday nights are kind of a variety of stuff. Your Saturday nights and your Friday nights are kind of reserved with specific types of nights, but Sundays are a little bit more chill. You've got a 90s grunge band from Seattle that uh, looking at them, you would think that given that they're a 90s grunge band from Seattle, they'd be all really old men. But as it turns out, they're actually looking pretty young and pretty good for their age. I wonder why. Eddie Vedder is a ghoul confirmed. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, that's kind of a, it's, it's not packed by any stretch of the imagination in the club, but it's just, uh, it's comfortable. You can easily move from one side. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw our chat. That's hilarious. Somebody put even flows about feeding. Yeah, there's a bunch of songs that are. You know, once you apply them to vampires, kind of make a lot more sense. Um, so, you know, it's it's comfortable in the club itself. There doesn't seem to be too much going on in the VVIP area. There's like maybe one or two um, kindred up there that are kind of keeping to themselves. Uh, so, what is everyone doing in the VVIP area? Sophia kind of um, flusters in with like a tote bag filled with like you just see like tufts of like uh, fabric um, like samples and like maybe like a couple like flowers peeking out and then uh, you see in her hand she's got like a bunch of those like paint swatches from Home Depot <laughs> um, in her hand. And she's just kind of like looking at them, like trying to figure out like which one she likes best. And she's just not quite like there with you. She's clearly like <laughs> trying to figure out what look she's going for. Is uh, Sophia kind of presenting these particular options to everyone? No, she's more so just like kind of talking to herself and talking okay. herself through it. And like, obviously, like, once she figures it out herself, that's when she's going to present it to the rest of it. But she's just kind of like flustered with herself. Like, I don't know, this one's a little bit more periwinkle, but this one's just a little bit too lilac. And I don't know about the pink and the lilac and what are the curtains and the flowers. I just, hmm, she's just in the corner, just kind of trying to figure this all out for herself. <laughs> What is everyone else doing? Violetta, what are you up to? So I come in, I see this. I'm like looking up at my phone. I'm furiously typing on this small old jank flip phone to my assistant. I'm just like, you need to do this. You need to do that. My, my father is coming in. <laughs> I don't say the S word because the inquisition, the government tracks my stuff. <laughs> I, did, um, I did pay my taxes in 2019 but i i ba like i'm like you need to do this you need to do that my father is coming into town he doesn't like it you're dead um the and then i come and hmm? uh the the kind of response thing back is like you see the dot 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 and then you type something else and send it and then you see the dot 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 and you type something else and send it so it's almost like they're trying to respond. They're making an attempt, but you're just like fast and furious, like sending texts to them. But they just are like trying to process the information that you're sending them all in a big list of like bullet points. And then after you're done, kind of one or two of the final texts, uh, you, you just get a message back from them saying like, OK, confirmed. Good. And I turn and I see Sophia just doing the same, just like, 
I just see it and then I shift around. I'm just like, okay, someone else has to be something, <laughs> doing something I can comprehend. This isn't me. Uh, Key, how are you approaching the Coterie situation? Um, he would just walk in and not, just not really say anything to anyone. He is feeling hungrier. So I'm guessing the VVIP place has, you know, we can kind of look down on everyone. Like we can see everyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, he would have just walked in walked up to the that railing and just was watching everyone in the club but they're thinking about just that they woke up with a twinge of hunger and as they're thinking about it they hear Sophia um talking about the flowers and the lilac all this and starts for some reason fixating on anybody in the club who's wearing uh clothing that has flowers on it just keep into themselves Unsurprisingly, in this particular club, there doesn't seem to be. There's a lot of plaid, though. That's fair. Kind of maybe flowery, if maybe. you get the right color combination. Kind of looks... Well, Key won't. Key's just going to be minding their own business, having just come in, not really talk. I feel like he doesn't really make an entrance. They leave that to uh, Sophia and Violetta. Everyone else just slips in. Uh, just glance over the window, and I'm like, why do they all look like blue collar criminals? And on that note, old man, how's it going? <laughs> Uh, though he's not uh, clad in plaid, uh, this very blue-collar criminal looking as an individual uh, uh, also steps in. Um, um, uh, he he goes in, into the uh, the coterie VIP area um, uh, uh, after taking just a quick uh, assessment of the club space, make sure everything is on the up and up. Um, and if he doesn't see anything out of the usual, uh, yeah, he's he's going to go back uh, kind of into that space, um, find the just like not not necessarily a dark corner to be like skulking in kind of vibe, but just to like sit down and kind of be by himself. Uh, he sees uh, uh, Sophia is uh, uh, is um, on one right now. So um He's he's gonna take his uh his like in the nineties era headphones, uh, plug them into like a, a cassette player, and uh, I assume it'll be like something like Al G G G Green or something to kind of like drown out this grunge shit that was uh, uh, way after his time. So this is an important like I don't think I've ever asked a more important storyteller question for specifics. Word. Discman or Walkman? Walkman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just making sure we've got the technology set up correctly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. They, they should... That doesn't skip. Uh, but, but every... Every four or five songs or so, he has to flip that shit, turn it around. He has, <laughs> he has a, a, a pencil handy to fix yep. it. You know, yep. he's yep. got it. He's got it. So it's it's not the like later end Walkmans. It's the originals where you got it like flip. OG. OG. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Antonia, your your entire coterie has now arrived. Well, Antonia, when they arrived, would have been probably looking over the uh, the banister of the balcony, um, looking at the grunge band and kind of making little notes in her notepad, things like, why aren't they using presents? Um, because she's also looking at the crowd. She's kind of getting an idea of what's drawing a crowd and what isn't, and she's making notes so that she can present them to the band afterwards. She's basically thinking to herself, I mean, they should be able to do this shit. Why did I hire them anyway? 
Um, and then she turns around to Key and she says, are they interesting to you? I think you should fire them. I mean, that might be an option. They're, you know, they're here once. What's, uh, what do you see wrong with them? Um, as Key's looking down at them, is there anything that anyone's doing like a little too much or, I mean, just body language being weird. Like they're in a conversation, but they're on the phone the whole time or, um, uh, give me a wits and investigation or awareness, whichever you <laughs> wits and investigation awareness. We're gonna. Okay. I keep reading it wrong. Okay. Sweet. Now I know how many. One, two, three, three successes. One critical, but I don't think that matters. Uh, criticals only really count if you get them in pairs. So, cool. uh, you said three successes. Uh, yes. key, key looks out. There's there's a lot of plaid out there. Um, oh. There's a few people that aren't entirely in plaid one of them upon closer inspection does kind of have plaid but it's like underneath the like standardized black leather jacket and it's someone who's like kind of leaning up against the wall and there's somebody that they're talking to and key with that number of successes, you get the feeling that this is not your standard conversation. This is, let's just say it's more of a K situation than it is a H situation, if you catch my meaning. I feel so dumb right now. I am not catching the meaning, <laughs> and I can write it like I don't, but I'm just right over my head right now. All right, sorry, I wasn't clear. Um, so it's more of a kindred type situation than it is like a human convo. Bingo, bingo, cool, 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 cool. See, baby lore. <laughs> um, learn a new thing every session. Uh, okay, with that in mind, Q will kind of be scanning everyone, see those two. Um, look back at um, Antonia and just kind of like do the eye shifts and head not over everyone's kind of boring but did you see these two i did not what do you make of this i don't know they're kind of talking like you know when uh sophia and violet are kind of arguing but they're also agreeing at the same time this weird lit i don't know just they're standing out in the crowd did someone say my name over there? Sophia and Violetta. No? Right. <laughs> I feel like as Sophia said that, he's just not looking back and just eyes wide realized how loud they were talking. But then like, oh, I just, if my parents always said, if you ignore your siblings, they'll forget and they'll just go back to what they were doing. She just starts sticking color samples <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> It's going to keep on staring at uh, you just by phone, like still in hand, just like, what you trying to say, bitch? No, no. I'm... Um, well, you know what? They're not causing any problems right now, so we'll keep an eye on them. Um, That's I'll true. We should keep them... an eye on them. I can go. I'll be back. Uh, and unless Antonio well... tries to stop them, he's going to start walking out. Antonia goes to protest, but then she's like, yeah. It's you trust that creature down in your club talking with other patrons. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't. I'm going to be the babysitter. <laughs> this is going to be the and best buddy cop movie I have ever seen. <laughs> Antonia goes back over to the table. 
if if Violetta was like quickly following Key out, Violetta because Violetta's looking at Key, they would notice. But um, Key's gonna immediately try to go into Unseen Passage using Obfuscate because I don't want no one to see me, hear me. I'm just chilling. That would be a rouse check. I do not have all specs. So it's just the one? Uh, it is just the one, yep. Sweet. Old, old that is a success. All specs. Uh, so no. after you hit the door, I'm assuming, to the VVIP. Yes. Once you let go of the door, he kind of fades from Violetta's vision. I'm dealing with a child. I'm dealing with a child. <laughs> Antonio, where where were they going? They were going to go check out. There's two there's two people down there that are, you know, well, okay, not people kindred me kindred me things. Uh that are looking not well, not quite um well, they're looking a little suspicious, let's put it that way. He thought that they should be checked out. And I mean, it's safe. He is very unobtrusive. It's Are we safe. talking about the same person? Yes. Do you see her? Them? Do you see yes. he? That is why I'm asking. You see he? Okay. I do not see he. I mean... I do not have that power. Hmm. I mean, that just means you don't you aren't paying attention, but that's just me. Ooh, that, go back to your corner. Go back to your corner. Could, this is an AG conversation. See yourself out. Uh, does anyone know if irises are in season? Anybody? No? Shit. Can you pay someone to do that? But Viola this, is a little bit irritable tonight. Just just a little bit. But this is fun. Don't you see it's fun? <laughs> Antonio goes and sits down next to Sophia. Likes. So, <laughs> with Key, how close are you getting to that particular conversation? Because... What the closer you get, the more it kind of seems like, you know, the meme. This is gonna date this episode, honestly. It's the meme of like, there's like the female presenting person, and then there's the guy leaning in, and then there's like mm -hmm. the long description mm -hmm. of yeah. Yep. So it's it it looks more and more like that, but it looks to your eyes because he has seen vampires interact with humans before. It's definitely seeming like kind of they're hunting and they are trying to, they're attempting to use presence, but it, it almost looks like the person who they're using presence against has been able to resist. Hmm. So the, the, the vampire of the, t the pairing kind of looks like they're, it looks like they think they're succeeding, if that makes any sense. It looks like they're thinking yeah. the power actually worked, when mm. clearly, to your eyes, it definitely did not. Like they got, they got beat on that particular role. He just wants to get close enough, like you know, do, leaning up against the wall, because he's like, well, if anybody can see me, I still want to look cool. So kind of like trying to find a spot to post up against the wall and just, he just has like their foot up against it. Um, I'm going to guess if there was like a small bar along the way, he would have like snagged a drink or, or something just in case anybody sees them. They don't look too out of place. Is but this... they're going to try to keep up the ruse and just be close enough that they can listen. This is another like really high up on the list of storyteller clarification questions. But for the uh -oh. lean up against the wall, is it like full back and then like the crook knee? Like 
leaning leaning yes. your flat foot against the wall. That okay. That, I've never been more scared to answer a question, but yes. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to paint the picture for the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you're you're pretty close to them. You, they are the male mortal that is kind of leaning up against the wall because the other male has their arm up kind of against the wall and the other person's like right in front Mm -hmm. of them. They are kind of, it's like a deer in the headlights kind of thing. Like they look kind of not socially awkward necessarily, but it seems like they're too nice to tell the person who's blathering on in Mm -hmm. constantly to, you know, piss off and leave them alone. So they're just kind of like, Drinking a little bit and like nodding and like, oh, yeah, yeah, mm, uh, yep, NFTs, mm, yeah, no problem. He doesn't mind this, it's not that hard, it's not that bad for Key to listen to, as opposed to what flowers are in style because Key knows that they are just of no use upstairs. So, honestly, Key will probably sm- spend a couple minutes downstairs just. Observing. Listening in on conversations. Just like, well, this you know, a, even if I don't get anything, I'll just hang out here for a minute. This is a long conversation. And Ugh, they always are. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to bounce back upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Tony and Sophia, you said you were sitting at the same table. Is there any I converse- have, yeah. I, I have uh, fabric um, samples all over the table. I'm like, what what do you what do you think about the curtains if we go with this royal crushed velvet? Yeah. Um Antonia takes the fabric, looks at it and says, So I did learn a few things from my sire. Mm-hmm. Cheap. Oh. And then she takes the next one. Right. And not and not not quite right. And then she takes the next one. She's like, mm, "Really, Sophia? Come on!" I'm just looking puts- at the colors. I mean, we can talk about the actual materials later. But I mean, I just I just need somewhere to start. <laughs> They're all wonderful colors, but they will look even better if the material isn't fabric. Well, I mean, I just, I just, I was just pulling from whatever I had handy at the moment. But yes, of course. No, you're right. That's, you're very right. <clears throat> because, I mean, beyond be a... the fact that it, it mm, yeah, beyond, beyond the fact that it's not very appealing, but you know your um, uh, friends in Toreador circles. Uh, have you ever heard the term Toreador Mean Girls? Oh, God, yes. So I forgot that is about what those. it will be. So that is what this will be. Ugh. So I can help with you. You deal with the colors, mm-hmm. but let me help you with the fabrics and get them okay. shipped hey. over. Do, that um, the um, not seamstress tailor is that you had Violetta go to the other night. Do they do they do gowns by any chance? Okay. Yes. If, the sire of my sire yeah. is a. Well, we we won't talk about it. That's you know that's a. Mm, yeah, of we course. We don't talk about him. But, no. Yes. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. Cool. Um. Hmm. Great. Oh, and music. I mean, what? Thinking. What, I'm not sure if something more classical. Oh God, I don't know. It's all too much, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, baby, yeah. You want to um, stay uh, together. I'm going to actually recommend that the old man do your music. Why? Um, what? How viable do you think it will be to dress him up for that? Yeah, that's a very nice question. Um, okay. He's right. ugly. Typically in the food business, you keep the people that you think are bad looking in the back. 
But I and mean, we could the cover nice the face. The front to trick I mean, them into giving more money. We just. But I feel that art his willingness. All. No, it art. No, it art doesn't. transcends yeah. all. Does is it? It's it's so shallow to believe that what you may view in terms of the outwardly persona is more important than the beautiful artwork that they produce. Yes, but aesthetics gonna, are a deal. I'm going to what? put a gentle hand on Antonia. True beauty comes from within. So if you're ugly, it means your insides are rotten. I am pretty sure that is not how that works. <laughs> What? But, oh, no offense. No offense, Matt. I'm pretty sure no, that's I'm... not how that works. Old man, what do you think of the crushed velvet? For you. No. No? Uh, okay, the then. old man uh, gets up and says, okay, a lot of things happened there just now. Um the not not the most vexing of which was that any of this is going to include me in any way see at least he's on the same page we didn't even need a timekeeper for this one. and if and if we your only term for keeping people in the back is ugly your hors d'oeuvres are going to taste like shit so oh, don't, say that. don't say I, that. We can't. It can't taste I, like I, shit. I, Our very I, lives depend on it. Don't of, say that. Um, old man, we just heard you sing, and I felt. You felt. I felt that your singing was glorious. You have a and very that good means, voice. And that means and what? I feel that you are an artist inside who has a talent. And perhaps Sophia might make use of your voice if you are willing to show get that, that voice to the participants in her little soiree. I will not say. Oh, that would be a I'll shame. That would be a band. loss. That would be a loss. I can help you find a band. I mean... We can definitely work together on that, but I still think it would be a loss if the world didn't hear your I'm good at, like, a couple of things, all right? But being good at something and enjoying something, they need to go hand in hand to, to make it worth anyone's time. Time being a thing that we have a lot of until we don't, right? Right. That's fair. Except you have centuries upon centuries. Well, I haven't even done, I haven't even hit one yet, so. Fair enough, fair enough. I was merely suggesting because I thought that your voice sounded quite good. I thought it was something that could be cultivated because it is rare to hear such a beautiful voice. Thank you, and Ponya, but I, I assure you it only happens with headphones on. And at where's, that point, where's key? At that point, as the old man makes that particular inqu inquiry, um, Antonia, your manager comes into the VVIP and they seem kind of rushed a little bit. Uh, boss. Yes. Um, there's somebody, uh, do you have that particular manager ghouled? That is a question. Uh, Antonio has no, Antonia has no ghouls. Okay. But would they have been let in on certain aspects of Let's say the nightlife. Um, they probably would have. While Antonia doesn't have any ghouls, her sire probably would have set her up with some of her sires. So to okay, make so transition smooth. You'd be your sire's ghoul, essentially. Probably. So they come up to you and they're like, boss, 
Uh, there's yes. someone here to see you from, I believe they said the La Sombra clan. And at oh. that point, we're going to take a bit of a break. So come on uh -oh. back, everybody, uh, uh -oh. in about seven minutes. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see who's here to visit. Is that, is that bad? Control all delete this event. I'm just gonna let this keep recording and then <laughs> come back in seven minutes, everybody. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, we have a visitor that's going to be coming in fairly soon. Uh, so, Antonia, your your manager comes running up. Well, not running, more moving quickly. There's no running in the club. And there... Uh, yeah, there's a someone from the La Sombra clan here for you. Uh, the look on Antonia's face is very quizzical, and she just says, did they give a name? I uh, cut out a little bit there. Did they give a name? Uh, yeah. They also said that they would give me trouble if I didn't say the whole thing. So it's Laritzia Teresa Biagio. Biago. Biagio. Biagio. Oh, okay. Biagio. She, Antonia looks around at Sophia, Violetta, and the old man because she knows that he is still downstairs and just says, does that sound familiar to any of you? And I roll a politics roll? Sure. Give me an intelligence and politics. I will also I roll. Also surge sure. for this? You can surge. Uh, do you want to surge as well, Sophia? Um, let me check. I get hungry. Violetta. Yes. You feel uh, hunger pangs. And in the back of your mind, you can hear that very, very familiar voice. Violetta. Stop being a disappointment. Told you to shut up. I will be there what? soon, and you can tell me yourself, child. You just see me, uh, see Violetta break the cigar in her hand. I'm not going to do it because I actually like this cigar. Uh, <laughs> That's for later. <laughs> I already got it in everything. Um, but um, I break my cigar in anger. I kind of taste just running my hand through my hair. And I get one, two, five successes. Five successes? Uh, any crits in there? No crits. No crits at all. All right. Uh, Sophia, would you like I rolled to... my like... one politics die. Uh, politics and intelligence. Oh, and intelligence. Sorry. <laughs> um, what was my intelligence? Is two, so that makes three total. Would you like to surge your intelligence, blood surge? No. What does that entail again? Uh, it would be a rouse check for mm -hmm. that, and then you would get plus two on your intelligence for the remainder of the scene. Okay. Um. Okay, so I'll do the rash check. Oh, that's seven. All right. Uh, you do not get hungrier for that, but now okay. your dice pool would go from three dice to five dice. So you, okay. if you want, you can roll them over again or just roll two additional okay, dice. Okay, great. So one is a crit. Two are crits. 
Uh, oh, nice. Two are sevens, and one is a two. Uh, was one of the crits on the Hunger Days? Yes. So, you also get a little hungrier. Ooh. And you also have, I believe, five successes. So you both had five successes. Um, for both of you, in the back of your mind, and Sophia, this takes a few extra seconds for you because you hear in the back of your mind, Sophia, darling, eat something, for Christ's sakes. Don't tell me what to do. You know, I hate that. I don't care <sighs> what you hate. Eat. Such nasty business. And for the uh, role itself, five successes for each of you. Um, it's a familiar name, but it is a new name. Uh, you both recognize that the Lasombra have recently joined the Camarilla. And even more recently, outside of Chicago, have seen some Lasombra who have been accepted in other uh, various cities and domains that have been joining the Camarilla. The Lasombra seem kind of sparse in Vancouver. There may be a few more, but the most prominent of which is Laritzia Teresa Biagi. And from what you both understand from the five successes, she is ruling over the other Lasombra with an iron fist. And she's completely and utterly done away with the velvet glove. They are pretty much under her thumb. Sophia just gives a knowing look to Violetta. I return that gaze and I just I just shake my head and just like we're dealing with the fucking turncoats tonight. Um should be fun. That's not the Stop. word I would have used for it. Um, storyteller. That's me. Would Antonio Antonia at least know enough about the La Sombra um, to know what player Joanna knows that technology should be put away? What is your combined politics and intelligence role? What what would that um, pool come out to? That would come out to five. You can roll it if you want. Or actually, or I can take half. No, yeah, take you can take half if you want, because two successes would be more than enough to figure that out. And pretty much, most uh, everybody else should probably know at least something. Like you've heard something about the technology, um, Sophia and uh, Violetta. You rolled five successes, so yeah, you'd be you'd be like, yeah, let's keep our technology away from. My poor 2004 flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> that one might not be as affected as, say, like a new iPhone or a tablet. I completely turn off both my tablet and my brand new iPhone. <laughs> Are they going in the in the sack that you brought these yes. swatches uh -huh. with? Okay. All the way at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony is definitely putting it in her purse then. Her phone in her purse. Key. Oh yeah, uh, no one cares about the Walkman, I'm assuming. <laughs> the Walkman wouldn't really be that affected by it. It's it's an older piece of tech, so yeah. <laughs> there might be like kind of the whenever you get the Walkman near a television t type of noise. If the little sombra gets close enough. Uh, key. 
So for us new VTM players, <laughs> why do we care about technology around La Sombra? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, the La Sombra, they have kind of a presence, kind of an aura that kind of messes up technology. Like they, if uh, it kind of extends to like, there's kind of, kind of a rot in their soul. So they don't even really show up in mirrors unless they have like a higher humanity. There's kind of like a blurry image that comes across and the same goes for anyone who's recording them on electronic devices. And it kind of extends beyond that with electronic devices. So if they get too close to like cell phones and stuff like that, it kind of negatively affects it. Sweet. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Uh, I was actually going to say key. No, you in observing with your back to the wall, uh, in your can you kind of have the, the couple to your right. Um, you see someone come in the club and they they just stand near the entrance. They stand out of the way so that they're not inconveniencing anyone else. But it's someone uh, female presenting. She's got a black uh, like dress shirt on, but it is an old style dress shirt. It's got like the frilly cuffs. It's got kind of the V-neck that comes down with like black lacing back and forth through it. She's wearing uh, leather pants and she has like an overcoat that is just across her shoulders type thing. Like her, her arms aren't in the coat and she has a, a black cane which looks like it has a, a very large kind of jewel, like a diamond at the top of it. And she's just standing there and she has someone just off to her right who is a large kind of... It looks like this particular... You could probably tell at your distance that it's a ghoul. Like, this particular person mm -hmm. looks like they were crammed uncomfortably into this suit. Like, the kind of like there's it's not like an overweight situation it looks like he's mm. like barely buttoned it up because his like shoulder muscles are so large and he's just standing there he has sunglasses on and he's just observing he, he has his head goes back and forth on a swivel keeping an eye on the situation and the person that with the cane is just waiting and observing. And you are pretty sure you're still in obfuscate. But their gaze kind of goes over to you and just holds. He would lift up their drink like cheersing them. <laughs> In case they see you, right. see him. There's a couple of seconds there where you're like, did they see me? Did they not see me? I can't tell. And then she takes like a gloved hand and slowly raises the cane up to her forehead and kind of gives you like a tip of the hat type scenario. He's just going to just kind of stay there and watch, watch her. And we're going to go back up to the VVIP. Antonia, what are you going to do with this particular news? Uh, the managers kind of, they're like, should I, should I let them, let them up? Should I? Yes. Uh, everybody ready? Uh, Antonia kind of gestures to everybody. All right. It's, if everybody's sorry, got this. We Critzing or <laughs> bowing I... or the old man puts his headphones away, just wraps them around the Walkman and puts in his coat. 
I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Old school style, wrapping it around, like in between yeah. the play button and the pause Yo. button. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Everybody's the, ready. Yeah. So the manager is like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then key what you see downstairs a couple about maybe 30 seconds later uh you see the manager who you recognize as one of the managers of the dark star come down uh slowly approach and it's almost like the manager doesn't quite know who to go to like the large bodyguard-esque person or the the person who has the cane and they're, they lean in and they're like, they whisper something. And then the person with the cane does like a head nod of a bow. And then they start making their way towards the VVIP. But before they get to the stairs, over the music, you can hear... They take the cane and they drop it down twice. And the NFT douchebag kind of snaps to attention and turns and follows them to the VVIP. And then they make their way up the stairs with the other two. Key will follow uh, um, her and everyone in, but Key will hop in like 30 seconds after they have gone in just to kind of look behind them and see if anybody else is following or if it was just the one it seems like it's just the one cool so this particular person makes their way upstairs and they go upstairs uh they see the large kind of cavernesque VIP section and then they you know they, they're looking around they are checking to see if anyone comes to greet them considering the politics scores that everyone has gotten so far does anyone go to greet them <laughs> Antonio will wait at the kind of entrance to the VVIP area just to demonstrate that they are at least somewhat civilized here. Are you the proprietor of this establishment? That I am. Antonia Piotrowska. I am Lorizia Teresa Biagi. Is there someone somewhere we can speak? Absolutely. You can follow me. And she gestures, go behind the kind of more curtained off area to the coterie's booth. Okay. She follows you uh, back there. And Antonia, as they approach the booth, says, I present to you, and then given that Joanna is not sure she can pronounce that full name without messing it up, I'm just going to blah, 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 and just, say that Antonia just, yeah. introduced uh, for everybody who, friend to everybody. For everyone who's mm-hmm. new to uh, Vancouver by Night, uh, we have kind of an old LARP rule that we put into play. If someone says something that your character would know... Just say blah, and then that's something that, yeah, something that would happen. Because vampires would know that sort of thing, like language and people's names, especially long, drawn-out names. And with (laughs) with Ventru and giving lineage and such, it just cuts down a lot on the time, where it's just like blah, blah. Uh, If if I can say... um, uh, 
you've said her name about five or six times now. Yeah. But the yeah. only thing that like locked in was that <laughs> she insists that you say the whole thing. Say her so whole I, name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I just wrote down a tribe called Quest. I just, <laughs> that's all I wrote. I'm like, you have to say the whole thing. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. There's no short forms on that one. Uh, so, Antonia, you do you like kind of motion her towards any of the seats? Uh, yes. I think I would just point her to whatever seat is free because probably Sophia and Violetta and the old man are, are sitting down at the table. So I just gesture her to a free seat. She pauses. She nods in your direction. And the large bodyguard person pulls out their pocket square dusts off the seat and then spreads it out in the square onto the seat. And she almost supernaturally kind of perches on the side of it. She does like the crossing her leg at the knee thing and she puts her cane down beside her. Uh, storyteller, That's me. can you explain to me a frenzy roll again, just for our viewers? <laughs> a frenzy roll uh, for everyone who has perhaps been insulted as a vampire or they feel that they're they're angry enough that they can do that. Uh, or if I call for it, because I'm, I'm a storyteller. Uh, a frenzy roll is all of your willpower, your unspent willpower, plus half of your humanity rounded down. We're going to end up with a big vampire fight over a seat. Oh, God. seven successes so i think i should be good yeah yeah you're you're more than good you're you feel kind of the tinge of anger in the back of your mind but then you're quickly like no oh wait no probably not the best to kill anybody just yet since you are the proprietor can only assume that this is your coterie. This is a coterie. This is our coterie. I do not presume to speak for them all. We are nor, nor a, would a I, team. Nor would I request that you do so. I am interested in the new domain has been granted. Hmm. Propose um, a trade. Please continue. I have been granted for the La Sombra clan a domain that is just to the north of your location. So the convention center? No, it's... These maps are so imprecise. It is approximately to the northwest of your location. Okay. And and you're proposing that we switch domains? Oh no, nothing so droll. I'm proposing a free movement granted. Okay. 
Okay. If you need to feed in what is what has been granted to the La Sombra clan by the prince in that area, if you need to feed or if you have business dealings, I would like to propose a mutual aid, if you will. How much access would you be wanting to have to this particular location? To this particular location, your, um, let's say, carved out domain in the city of Vancouver, I would propose a mutual trade. Whatever. Oh, no, I mean this particular location, this establishment. I'm just wanting to make sure that the comings and goings of other clans and in general are still under the, shall we say, under the the line of propriety so that it oh, is course. not a masquerade breach. No. Nothing of the sort. That would be uncouth of us as guests. What I'm proposing Thanks. is whatever access you would have in my domain would be granted in return for your domain to any of the La Sombra clan. So if you don't want specific areas to be accessed, then there will likely be specific areas in the Lysombra domain that will not be accessed by your coterie. A deal. A mutual exchange for the betterment of the two parties. Well, that understood. I, I respect your position here. Um, you must know, of course, that as a venture, I do need everything in writing. Um, oh, of course. And our wonderful lawyer here, Vileta, um, can definitely go over the terms of the agreement that you propose in writing um, at her usual rate. And uh, then we can negotiate. Understood. Um, about, let's discuss minor terms first. For let's say hunting. I'm assuming the club would be available for feeding. Nothing overly dramatic, nothing, not killing anyone, just feeding in general. The odd bite to eat or, as the neonates say, take out. It would be during specific times, specific hours, uh, or a specific days in turn, well, nights, I should say, um, in terms of our particular clientele, so that uh, we can ensure that our the feeding is spread out. So we would definitely need to negotiate some firm numbers. Some firm numbers as to how many, which nights, and uh, which times, how long they can stay here. Because as you can clearly see, myself and my and the coterie here, we have an establishment that has gained a fair amount of popularity. And as such, it makes a fairly good hunting ground, which most other domains don't have, other than the rack, of course. But that's not your intermittent. Yes, 
that is a bit of a problem. The I'm... the only there is one of my plan that has a backup domain backup a, a backup haven near your territory i would like to see that they have access to that domain that sounds near like my territorism Um, near the domain, but not actually. So you're. They would have to cross through your domain in order to get to it. Why all this care for one member of your clan? Seems a bit inconvenient. Especially and... when Antonia just stated she would like everything in the clauses and subclauses of this particular agreement in writing. And at that point, the NFT douchebag, who up until this point had been standing to the La Sombra's left, sticks his hand in and goes, uh, hey, I, I'm Leopoldo. And she, without moving the rest of her body, grips his arm and breaks it. And he drops to his knees in pain. He's like, ah! You will speak, child, when spoken to. My apologies for such an interruption. That's a nice Inter way to handle your interns. That said, interruption or not, it is violence in my club that was not sanctioned. I do apologize. I would offer a minor boon in compensation. That would be acceptable. And please make sure that he is well taken care of. Of course. And she, at that point, moves her leg, uh, uncrosses her leg and kind of pushes off on him because he's on the floor. He will be taken care of at my earliest convenience. Excellent. I can let Violetta handle this. You were saying about clauses and things like that, Violetta? Yes, I'd rather prefer it since you already stated it and since it's just best practice to have everything stated in the clauses and subclauses, especially any bodily specific details you have, whether it considers to be an inconvenience in some cases. As I was saying, it seems to be somewhat peculiar to take all this care for one particular member of your clan. Oh, it seems like favoritism, but... Well, it would either be this and dealing with your illustrious coterie or dealing with the Ventru clan as a whole. So it you preferred your chances here to... Adventure. Don't you? I'm sorry. I, I I apologize. I I think I didn't make myself clear. You, you do understand who I am, correct? Oh, I understand who you are. Okay, so you're not just speaking to any venture. I you understand also that, correct? Understand certain lineages. Yes. And I also understand that there is a Devonshire-like problem. Oh, is this news now? Um, interesting. What, I have... what Devonshire problem would you be referring to? From what I understand, as I was there in the meeting at the time... The Ventru disagreed with 
your coterie ending up in this domain. They wanted this domain for themselves as a whole. Yes, and they can't have it. I understand that. There is an old saying. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I would rather deal with you as a coterie than the Ventru clan as a whole. This part I can see. Uh, our coterie may be more amicable to certain conditions and things like that, but please do not underestimate the particular strength of the individual members of our coterie and their lineages. Oh, I, I do not underestimate anything of that. I would just rather have a deal in place with a coterie such as yourselves rather than the venture. Can I that try is... and roll insight? Sure. Uh, give me a wits and insight. Or wits I and awareness. Rouse again. I want to start again <laughs> and turn fate. You roused intelligence before. You can't fool me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually succeeded on this once, believe it or not. Excellent. Okay. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I got five on a crit. Five on a crit? Yes. Did it happen to be blood dice in the crit? It wasn't. Damn. Uh, yeah, so five on a crit. What are you trying to discern from what they're saying? More so... I guess whether or not they felt like they would get a more amicable deal. By oh yeah, you us. you're picking that up in spades. Like it's practically, despite the fact that her, like the way she's sitting, the way she's moved, the way she, she's practically been like a stone statue since she got there. But everything that you're picking up because you've been in negotiations in the past as a lawyer as a Zemissi, as, like, pretty much a human, like, everything that you're picking up is that she'd rather, like, remove her own skin than deal with the Ventru as a whole, as a clan. Like, this is, like, way better of an option for her. I'd love to help remove someone's skin. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my my interruption at this moment. I hope you don't find it rude. You are a member of the Coterie. You can speak freely within your own domain. Thank you. I'm glad you recognize that. I know that you thought that you were going to get a more amicable deal by coming here, but here's the thing. There's just one tiny thing you came here on purpose without anything written up knowing that this coterie is made up of a bunch of neonates some of which this is their first ever domain that they've ever had let alone within this country and you decide I can get a better deal out how much of a better deal, I won't say, but something tells me, and you don't have to confirm it, that you believe that this was going to be quite easy for you and that you can just come in here and make whatever your suggestions were sound very minuscule and minor and that we would agree and say yes, because you truly do believe that Perhaps the Venture would negotiate for something a bit more restrictive. 
Again, how restrictive, I won't say, but you thought that we would just say yes to everything. Now, is that not correct? Yes and no. Elaborate, please. Yes, by way of, I thought that there would be the ability between myself and your coterie to make a, make a deal. No, by way that I didn't think any deal at all would be on the table with the venture. So you just decide to see if I can go all in. Perhaps maybe it won't be as restrictive. You could have started out by perhaps asking moderately. But then you showed your whole hand and said, oh, but someone in my clan lives particularly close to you. That part of the deal won't do. That's a bit suspicious. Understandable. With everything else on the table, what do you all think? Oh, I'm leaving this to them. And Antonia points to the coterie, and she probably somehow in the back of her mind figures that Key's somewhere. So she <laughs> knows that he is listening and. You Antonio guys probably would have seen Key because Key, I had said that Key came in behind. Them. Oh, so all, all, all I like, could envision was like Key never moved from behind them, and you might have, you might have seen, yeah, because I was still um, unseen. But the the red cloak is behind them when there's a bunch of like darkness. I <laughs> Just imagined when the guy got his arm broken and he fell down that's when people just see the keys just been standing back there the whole time just hands in their pockets okay so antonia in that case is is gesturing to the rest of the coterie and says i'm leaving the decision to them because my decision is 100 percent decided by the desires and wishes of my coterie so uh if i'm to get this right you just want passage and you tried to pass in a few extra things like eating rights hunting rights yada 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 access to the club right correct okay because see that's that's the thing is that you're not the first person to come here under the assumption that we would just take a, like a half-baked handout in exchange for everything. You see, we know that the town is getting carved up. Indeed. And we know that it's getting carved up house by house by house by house, except for us, you see. Except for us, we're not a house, we're a coterie, you know? So, I don't know your politics as much, but I know what it looks like when the town is getting ready for a fight. And if you intend to use our domain as a no man's land, something that can then get ramped up and eventually turn into a battlefield for that. <laughs> you understand that that's, that's ugly. We don't want that, right? Your attention to detail and tactics are impeccable, sir. Thank you. What I am suggesting, if it I'm, is to sorry, come to that, sorry. Okay. I'm holding the, I'm, uh, I'm holding the fancy pen. 
<laughs> my fancy fountain pen from, my fancy fountain pen from Austria. It comes it comes back around. Comes back around. Oh, that's good. Um and she looks at the old man and she's I too have the same mindset that you have. I do not envision your domain as a no man's land. I know that it is your coterie that is in control of it. We La Sombra are looking at this as a manipulation. Of who? Exactly. Of all of, of all of us. This seems, as you put it, potentially a playing everyone off against one another until such time as they are ready to do something or even just to play us all off one one against the other until to keep us distracted, to keep ourselves busy. What I'm proposing is a, not a mutual defense, but if we have a deal in place where your coterie, if they so choose, would like to hunt in our domain, that we get the same in return. And if your domain happens to be attacked in a battle if someone decides to try to take what is yours we La Sombra would like to help defend if you need it because what is yours is yours and what is ours is ours but if someone were to attack yours while some of my fellow La Sombra happen to be here. That would be a benefit to you, because then that would invoke my ire as well as yours. I've seen this. Uh, have you made this deal with anyone else? We have not. You are our first stop. There's a few others that we are going to be approaching. Possibly the Gangrel who exists to our north. Potentially the Bruja, but we want to keep things as limited as possible. You are afraid so... of how the entanglements may work? Oh, there's always entanglements. Yes, on a microscopic scale, but you're aware that this is bigger than that. You're aware I'm, that we're getting played off for some reason. I'm aware. But I'd rather have that be as limited as possible. If they want to play us off against each other, that we don't play that particular game. I think the agreement needs to entail, include, the agreement needs to include which parties, which clans are in this mutual pact. For, because... right, for right now, what I'm proposing is your totary and our La Sombra territory. If you want However, to include more clans in that, more territory, we can discuss that. But for right now, I would like to set the groundwork as just us. Oh, I understand. What I'm saying is that if you, uh, three days from now, go and make a deal with the Bruja or the Gangrel, and heaven forbid if they should decide to attack our lovely establishment, then whose side are you on? 
I will, upon discussing with them, I will try to make sure that your coterie is off the table if they chose to expand. Interesting. But right now, your borders, as they say, do not intersect with the Bruja or the Gangrel. Chances of that are minimal. There is one thing that I was always taught, that if the chance is minimal, the chance is still there. There's always a chance, and uh, eh, my clan likes to be a little bit more calculated in choices. Understandable. All right. My dear, is, is there anything else that uh, we wish to discuss with La? I believe I've I believe I've heard enough. Um, it is. I have found. a curiosity. What do you know of the Toreador territory? The Toreador territory is mostly extending from the art gallery west. Interesting. It's actually on the other side of the Ventru territory from here. And I believe they also negotiated several smaller galleries there's one in yale town mm. actually there's several in yale town mm. and there are a few others scattered amongst the areas the i mean no offense but the toreador seemed more concerned about protecting art than they did about carving out any territory for themselves true that but they did ask to also have access to this domain as well. That is, that is something that makes sense. I've been hearing from several neonates that this particular club is, what is the term that they use, Leopoldo? And he's like on the ground, still gripping his arm, like, good eats. Uh, mm. Good eat, yes, good mm -hmm. eats, whatever that means. So we'll have La Sombra feeding here, possibly Toreadors feeding here. And I imagine you won't be the last to come asking for access. Most likely not. I think you will need to give us some time to muse and consider your proposal. In that case, I will take my leave. And she stands up because she was like really close to the edge of her seat the whole time. It didn't seem possible that the chair wouldn't have fallen over. She stands up grabs a business card from the large, bulky bodyguard type person and puts it on the table with a gloved hand and slides it over to whoever wants to take it. You can reach me at this particular number. Uh, it is not one of those newfangled cell phones that people speak of. And I will bid you all adieu. Oh, do make sure that you are properly refreshed before you eat or before you leave. But obviously, ex exercise caution. But we do want to make sure that our guests are properly treated. 
I can understand that, but... Are your refreshments of the mortal variety? They are of the mortal variety. There are probably some, but again, please exercise caution. And as well, Suzette um, at the bar uh, can fashion you something that is more in a glass and doesn't require as much of a personal touch, shall we say. That is appreciated. Only the freshest. But it is not of my taste. Many thanks, anyway. And she turns at that point and leaves. Well, thoughts, anyone? We are going to be quite the feeding ground. We need to turn into Amsterdam. I don't think Wait, we've so made any downers and druggies go. No, we haven't made ratified, any deals yet. Ratified in law, that's how you. They, right? You ratified in law that nothing can go down here. So we can try to keep everybody out, but we don't have, quite frankly, the power to effectively get that done. Or we can let everyone in. But if anything happens here, they're, they're done, enforced by everyone else. Mm -hmm. Don't let one person. Fuck up a good thing. We 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 already have the -na nas with the terms that they stay underground and they just pass through. That they don't hunt, they don't eat on our turf, right? Same thing for everyone else. We so could also we have, be... you know, secret themed nights, goth night for the Sabbat or sorry, La Sombra, and Punk Night for the Toreadors, and so on and so forth. But I mean, up to you. That, that, that might work as a perk for the club, sure, but I'm talking about the streets outside, right? Mm, yeah. It might be best then to go around to what our, our remaining neighbors are. Ask them what their thoughts on are. Write up free written contracts for them that we set at our pace, and then that if they refuse, you play up the deal until someone bites. When really they get very little. That's that's not bad. We go to all of them before they can come to, to us. We set the, the the terms of how it happens. So are we banking on the Nosferatu being our enforcers? They're Informers. Who has that down map? I, I forgot the clans on, on the on the map, like uh who is uh south and east and west of <laughs> I don't know if I wrote it all down. I will be sending a map to everybody in our Discord. Sweet. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, I have no qualms with that proposal. So. Am I to understand that getting in a fight with a... a um, Ila Sombra is probably worse, much, much worse for any kindred than getting in a fight with any other clan. Oh, most definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Underhanded bastards. That's why they decided to switch. Oh, wait. That's why they strategically opted to change their affiliations. Hmm. Hmm. Something about shadows, I think. That's a nice way to put it. All right. 
I'm assuming well, you have never encountered one in a fight. No. I have not. No. That will not last for long. I hope that if it happens that they are on my side. Said. But I am not going to make any decisions for anyone. I think Vela has the right idea. Maybe we go to the other territories and find out what's going on. It's settled then. Now, who wants to help me figure out how we're going to decorate the restrooms for the ball? And on um, that note... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, um, go ahead. The, the 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 old the old man gets up. Um, he says, um, "I got some something to eat way to get home," and uh, he's getting up to walk away. And then he stops, walks back, takes a uh, champagne color and. Pairs it with, with an ivory white, and then instead of grabbing a swatch, he grabs like, uh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, an ornament uh, in the room made made out of oak, and he goes bear, and he waves. <laughs> That's quite good, actually. After turn some videotapes. And on that note, <laughs> uh, it is time to call this particular episode to a close. So thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for any bits or subscriptions you felt the need to send our way. Uh, if you've sent it our way, if not, thank you for watching. And nonetheless, uh, any watch helps. Uh, so we're going to do some quick round table of everybody and uh, tell everybody where you're going to be, what you're doing, what you got coming up at some point soon, because we film these really far in advance. So uh, let's start over to my left, which I think is your left, because this is flipped uh, in reverse order. And let's go with Elaine first. Uh, hey, what's up? My name is Alan Williams. Uh, I am a writer, producer, actual player, all kinds of things. Um, and you can find me at Questline on Twitch. That's Questline being Diddy, where you can find me playing uh, lots of awesome games. Uh, we've also made like sketch comedy content under second besties um and i guess i've been uh doing this thing uh, long enough that you can find me in previous episodes of uh of uh vancouver by night uh and i i encourage you to watch uh all, all, all the other awesome stuff that that they've done here so hell yeah and chris that was so wholesome hello i'm chris aka key aka dnd imposter on all socials um uh i am learning how to play vampire the masquerade as we go <laughs> um okay that was what it was where else you can find me um you can find me. i play nathera on here's the bastion show which can be found on alec the bard's youtube and i know i guess when this is released it'll be a little ways off but if you're going to pax unplugged i will be gming for gehenna gaming and free league publishing so come play spooky stuff with me and Joanna. Hi, my name is Joanna. I was playing Antonia the Venture for you today. You will find me on all the socials as Hyrule Gardner. And you will find me here playing Vampire in various capacities. And that's about it. And Monica. Hi, Monica here. Uh, I was playing Sophia for you all tonight. And uh, you can find me at Monica M underscore art amongst all the different social medias, including the newer ones. Uh, I'm all wrapped up in all those as well. Uh, you can check out my graphic novel coming out in September, uh, available wherever books are sold. Um, it's a middle grade graphic novel, but it's fun for all ages. So check it out. And last but certainly not least, let's go over with Michaela. 
Hello, I am Mikayla, otherwise known as Cosmic underscore Dazai on all socials. You can find me here on Vancouver by night playing an absolute bitch, or you can find me torturing my, uh, my, my cast members on Girls Run These Worlds, where I think likely by this time, my chronicle should be up and running for a short amount of time, one night only. Anyway, please send me all your the meat sea stuff to my TMs. I appreciate it. And this guy's storyteller Steve, as you just saw, we have the meat sea t-shirts available on our uh threadless shop. Yes, threadless. That's the word I was looking for. Threadless shop. Uh you can go check that out. And if you buy the meat sea anything, we've got stickers, we've got hats, we've got uh little carrying bags for your laptops if you want those and we've got shower curtains and i will not never not mention the shower curtains <laughs> so you can buy the meat sea shower curtains set it up all nice in your bathroom and then take a picture of it and send it to Michaela. so uh other than that <laughs> other ways to support the channel you can if you're on our youtube subscribe if you're here on twitch uh, follow us. Those are the free options. Every view, every follow, every subscription helps us a lot. But if you have the means and you want to help us support the channel, subscribe on Twitch, which is the five, I think five or six dollar option. Uh, or you can become a member on our YouTube, which is the three dollar option. And you can, we give the money to the folks on the screens. Uh, so that'll help us out a lot. Or you can go over to our Patreon. If you have just the $1 option, you get to see a bunch of our behind-the-scenes stuff that we do uh, for all of the different shows that we're on. Uh, we do some Session Zeros that we put on there, uh, and we do a bunch of other stuff. But if you go for the $5 option, you can get it, the episodes early. So you're probably watching this early right now. If you paid the $5 option or you could watch it with everyone else when we upload it to Twitch and YouTube. So uh, we will find somebody to rate out to if we're on Twitch. If we're on YouTube, we're not going to be rating anybody because they don't have that option. So we'll find somebody to rate out to and we will see you next week. Have a good night, everybody.